Welcome to the Smith and Rowland Show. Let's join our host, Alan Smith and Jeff Rowland. And welcome everyone to the Smith and Rowland Podcast. Brought to you by kingdompropheticsociety.org. Go there, click the join button, which costs you nothing. That's right. And then you'll have access to all of the Smith and Roland uh, podcasts. You'll also have access to Alan Smith's teachings every Sunday from straight from New Life. And also the and, teachings of Jeff Rowland, straight from the Grace Place. Straight from the Grace Place. And written articles galore, plus many other videos mm -hmm. that goes up that are videos of mass importance. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> of great significance. That's right. And if you do do that, if you join, the added benefit is you'll get to see our faces Yeah, you can every stop. Day. I, I, I thought you were going too far, but yeah, okay. <laughs> Look at that. Good morning, Mr. Rowland. Good morning, Mr. Smith. <laughs> I hope you're doing good today. I'm doing wonderfully well. I think we might just um, need to come up with an intro that you just read. See, no, watch see, this. It, Listen, these spontaneous I, in, that's intros. Watch. Let me just right, say, okay. got millions around the world. <laughs> Listen, just for the intro. Just for the intro. Oh, 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 just and for the I, intro. Oh, I've got fan mail about it. The intro fan yeah. mail. Yes. The intro king. Ex that's what they call me, Jeff Intro King Rolling Hashtag. Hashtag. And I just want to thank my daughter, Ollie, for being that, <laughs> that one that sends in that fan mail. <laughs> that's right. Dad, dear dad, keep up the intro work. That's what, <laughs> that's, that's what she yeah. said. And she also says, dear dad, please explain to people who I'm married to. Chad, stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, you know, I, that's why I do that. Yeah. <laughs> Doing it just for my daughter. <laughs> just for your daughter. Yeah, that's You'd right. do it if you didn't have a daughter. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that I know Chad, you're right. I would. All right, Mr. Olin, we've got yep. some interesting news here. That's that's about just a, RFK. It's starting to it's percolating, and I'm I'm almost seeing a dream team come together. Boy, wouldn't that be nice? Me yeah, too. Yeah, I'm almost seeing that. It Me says too. RFK Jr. dropping out, endorsing Trump? Question mark. Yeah, we don't know that yet, but no, but they that's are really um, a lot of speculation going on here. In the next twenty-four hours, both of them will be within twenty minutes of each other in the state of Arizona, when it is expected that RFK will be making his announcement that he's dropping out of the race. Yeah, that does bring to light there was conversations we know between RFK and Donald Trump. Donald Trump this morning alluded to that and talked about that and uh, had uh, good things to say about Robert F. Kennedy and said he's known him for some for a long time and that he is an incredibly smart man. Yeah. And Donald Trump did not say that he was, you know, anything other than, you know, that he was would be honored mm -hmm. if RFK would was going to endorse him. Mm -hmm. So it's not, you know, official. It's not for sure. I don't even know. I don't. I don't know what RFK Jr. is going to do. I can foresee uh, him being the next Secretary of State, what do you or think? Attorney General, or Attorney General. Attorney General. Would Attorney be General would be better. Yeah, I well, said Secretary of State, and yeah. you said Attorney General. Well, I think Attorney General would be better. He's, you know, he was a lawyer, mm -hmm. and uh, plus his dad did that for John. His Kennedy. dad did that for John F. Kennedy, and with his platform, with RFK's platform of corruption in the government and the merger of the corporate powers into That's the government huge. attorney general would put him that in the slot where him. he could he could do something about it he could it. do more there than if he was president yes he could as in, far as cleaning that, up he could, in, he, as far as cleaning up the swamp without any doubt yeah. and i think that would be incredible now some of what we i hope we get to today that we're going to be talking about for some time robert f kennedy junior did a podcast just in the last few days with rachel Campos Duffy. She does Fox and Friends on the weekend mm -hmm. and uh, has a podcast. Her husband was a former congressman. And uh, that podcast largely was about food mm -hmm. and the food we eat and the damage that food is causing. Right. Mm -hmm. Robert F. Kennedy had a lot to say about it. It was a lengthy podcast and, and, and he was well versed and has done massive research and he was he was targeting food in terms of what it's doing to our children tucker carlson just recently did a, a podcast it was a two and a half hour podcast that i'm hoping we're going to be talking about later on 
that in terms of that same thing. There is an alarm being sounded across our country concerning food. Mm-hmm. We've done podcasts about the lab-grown meat centers mm-hmm. that our government is funding. Our military is the experimental case of this, where they're using lab-grown meat to feed the soldiers. That's right. So food's a big deal. Food is a huge deal in the Bible. Mm -hmm. There is more information about food in the Bible. As a matter of fact, close to 600 times the word eat is used in the Bible, Mm. what we eat. We'll get back to this RFK thing in just a minute if you you want to. But I want to say about the, the Bible and food, Alan, the very first thing we read about in the scriptures is God telling Adam and Eve, don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. Of all the other trees you can eat, don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, indicating that what we eat is a matter of life and death. In the day you eat it, in that day you'll Mm -hmm. die. We know that was spiritual, but there was the physical connotation as well. Oddly enough, every time in the Scripture that God shortened man's days, he changed man's diet. So what we eat is significant, and uh, there's a, a lot of power in that. Mm-hmm. Obesity in children, and, and oddly enough, listen to this. Did you know that Alzheimer's is now being called type 3 diabetes mm-hmm. based off of what you eat? So there's a whole lot of things about food that we're going to be talking about. And RFK Jr. spent a great deal of time on that podcast mm-hmm. with Rachel Campos Duffy talking about food, which makes you wonder that if he does have a position in Donald Trump's cabinet, would it be something in the line of health and human services? Something of that of that sort. I don't know. Well, he's definitely an expert on the topic. It appears to me that some of his positions are a little extreme, but at the same time, I understand you sometimes have to take an extreme position, just try to end up in the middle by the time you finish trying to push through yeah, that's right. what you're trying. And so I understand all of that, and I take all of that into account. And I do agree with him on two-thirds you know, as far as his environmental subjects and topics that he talks about. Where he comes against the corporate machine, I think he does excellent. It's just absolutely incredible. Where he comes against the farmer or even cows, I'm not really sure where he stands on cows. There's a recent study just came out about three weeks ago that come to find out that that cows do not produce this negative because of how they counter, the, you're talking about the carbon situation and the methane that they release. It is now found that the opposite is true of what they thought right. was the negative, that cows are actually now contributing to a positive impact, of, if, if you want to use that as a an point of argument. Mm-hmm. The methane gas. So that's been proven as negative now through science. Yeah. And so through some of the universities, they were saying this is not true like they like they thought it was true. So we know that it's a – the only way you can make sense out of this type of conversation, Jeff, is people need to realize that when people are against eating meat, they're against – the which we know that the Bible says that meat was put here for us to yes, eat. Yes, absolutely. That's a, basically a direct quote. Absolutely. So it was put here for us to eat. Yeah. People need to understand that this type of jargon and conversation about doing away with cows and yada, 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 it doesn't make sense except that you need to realize it's a religion out of hell. That's exactly right. It's a religious ritual. That's exactly will. right. If you understand that it's a demonic religion – then you get a true view of what's going on. Why are people against a cow? What, what is the deal? It makes no sense. In other words, they're against a cow, but they're for lab-grown meat, which you have to feed it a gooey substance of soybeans, cotton seed. You're feeding <clears throat> this meat all of this slush made up of the same components that you feed a cow. So lab-grown meat... Has, it takes more of that substance to grow a pound of meat in the lab than it does to a cow. Yeah. That's exactly right. Somebody wake up. And you got to understand this lab grown meat doesn't consume all this slurry. Yeah. So you got a bunch <clears throat> of yuck left over after yeah. you wash off the sludge off of this lab grown meat. Yeah. 
you got to dispose of, yeah. which is the byproducts of soy, cotton, corn, and those type products. So you still end up with a manure, if you will. Mm-hmm. It doesn't just disappear yeah. into the meat. Yeah, It's just so ludicrous. It's like somebody taking an insane pill here yeah. to believe such foolishness. Mm-hmm. But when you understand there's a demonic religion that's pushing these type of demonic sacrifices that the human is supposed to partake in, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to put it in true language, yeah. I think Kennedy... Uh, I think he's a plus on that side. Oh, I do too. In Donald Trump's interview with Elon Musk, Elon Musk brought up saying, I would be glad. Elon Musk said, I would be glad to come in and help with the the financial environment of wasteful spending. And Trump had a response. Trump said, I think that would be great. Mm -hmm. So what it looks like is in that sense, Donald Trump is reaching out to the private sector, Mm -hmm. or at least open to those in the private sector. Mm -hmm. Now, how that's going to correlate with Robert Kennedy saying, you know, the the merger of corporate powers and whatever, I don't know. But the thing that I do know is that I am convinced, you know, there's a lot of people out there that thinks Robert Kennedy is crazy. That's, because of his deal crazy. on vaccines. The problem is, is everything that he has said that. about that has come true. That's right. And I'm talking about from a scientific, it's been documented mm-hmm. it's, that it's so. He's uh, not making it he's up. He's not making it up. No, there is definite links to... Everybody to, knows to, that. To, it's yeah. got an ounce I mean, of I mean, a brain. On. It's ludicrous to mm-hmm. say. He's one of the smartest individuals you'll that you'll listen to. Mm-hmm. And not just because he's, you know, uses big words and he's got great mm-hmm. language. That's mm-hmm. not it. It, mm-hmm. it. You know, if you go to the basics of what he talks about and then research it, you find there's scientific evidence mm-hmm. to back up what he's saying. I think it's going to be a great thing for Trump if he gets the endorsement of Robert F. Kennedy. We don't know. We'll know tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Should know tomorrow. Maybe. What Robert F. Kennedy did float out there is that his he was going to talk about his path forward. Yes, that's what he said. And if he endorses President Trump, it would lend you to believe that maybe he's going to have some type of a position mm-hmm. in the Trump cabinet. Could you be- imagine having... Kennedy as uh, Attorney General. You have Elon Musk running a think tank on how to cut spending. Yeah. You realize what a dream team you're I, putting together? I, I totally agree. Because Trump did have another response. He said, well, listen, the reason I don't want Elon in there because he cut Twitter 80% yeah. and it's still running better now than it ever has. That's exactly right. He said, he's my man. Absolutely. <laughs> and oddly enough, that relationship is being forged while Donald Trump is saying, no, we, we can't do away with gas-powered cars. Yeah, yeah, at the same time. I, well, not only it, that, Trump's got his own personal Twitter, if you will, or, or, yeah, or, or right, X. Yeah, uh, 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 yeah. Uh, Truth <laughs> Social. Truth they Social, and they're not seeing each other in competition. Or as enemies. Uh, they're, yeah. As enemies, they're, they're embracing each other. That's right. Which is, is what we're losing in America. Well, when Robert F. Kennedy first announced, you and I did podcast on that, mm-hmm. and a lot of the, the uh, conservatives would have shot us, but we were both impressed by Robert F. Kennedy. Now, when I say that, I'm not impressed by some of his social stances. I'm not. No, I'm not. I don't agree with I, him on abortion. I don't agree with him on those mm-hmm. on those things. Mm-hmm. But I, I can also say Donald Trump's not as strong on abortion as I want him to be either. No, it he, looks like he's even uh, weakening a little. But you and I have both said on the podcast, Jeff, that that doesn't concern us as much anymore because this is now put into the hands of the state. That's exactly right. It's so not a federal it's, issue. It's not a federal issue now. Uh, it's a state it's issue. It's a state issue. So where our efforts needs to be concentrated is on the state level, the state level mm-hmm. with the governors and mm-hmm. the state legislators. Which goes, no one talks about that much. We talk mm-hmm. about the president, we talk about Congress, talk about Senate. We should be talking about the governors mm-hmm. and the state legislators mm-hmm. because that's where that issue is going to land. Mm-hmm. And here in North Carolina, we're not nearly as we're strong not, on abortion no, as we need to be. And, and no. you know, you and I live in, in uh, uh, central North Carolina or in the Piedmont, I guess you'd say. The state of North Carolina is now becoming more of a liberal state than it used to be. And the conservative mindset is shrinking in North Carolina. It appears so. Uh, I, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that's fake news, but it does appear that oh, way. Oh, it's, it's, I think it's that way. Mm-hmm. By the way, Donald Trump spent a lot of time in North Carolina yesterday. He was in Asheville. He was in Asheboro. And he did one of his first, uh, he was in Asheboro, North Carolina yesterday. He did his first outdoor rally here mm-hmm. in Asheboro. He was behind bulletproof glass 
But there was a lady over here that, it, because of the heat, was about to pass out. And Donald Trump left, come out from behind the bulletproof glass, and went over to her to just to check on her to make sure that she was okay. <laughs> yeah, he called for a doctor or something. Yeah, I thought that was just cool. Yeah, yeah. But we do have, tomorrow's a big day. RFK is going to be somewhere in Arizona, and Donald Trump's going to be somewhere in Arizona, and they're going to be about 20 minutes apart, and RFK is supposed to lay out his plan going forward. Let's pick up a little on this article yeah. here, Jeff, if you will. I'll read the first paragraph. You yeah, want to pick up the points. In a political landscape full of surprises, Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s next move might be the most unexpected yet. After months of campaigning as an independent presidential candidate, RFK Jr. is reportedly stepping out of the race. But the timing and location of his upcoming announcement have fueled speculation about his future and whether it might involve a role in a potential Trump administration. Yeah. Pick it up there, Jeff. RFK Jr. plans to address the nation from the same city where Donald Trump is scheduled to speak, sparking rumors of a potential alliance. Neat. Insiders suggest that RFK Jr., known for his controversial stances, could be positioning himself for a prominent role under Trump should the former president win in 2024 election. Then it says Trump has already expressed openness to working with RFK Jr., praising his independence and willingness to challenge the status quo, particularly on issues like vaccine mandates and big pharma's influence. Mm -hmm. Now, let me just, I want to say this about RFK Jr., Everybody's up in arms about what they did to Joe Biden, and what they did to Joe Biden was wrong. It was in wrong. the Democrat Party. I, you know, I'm not. I'm definitely not pro Joe Biden, but I'm certainly not pro Kamala Harris. And I, I think I would rather have an incompetent Joe Biden than a fully lucid I Kamala had, Harris. I'm amen right uh, there, and I second that emotion. Yeah, but at the same time, what they did to Joe Biden is that Joe Biden had 14 million primary votes, and Kamala Harris had zero, and suddenly Kamala Harris is the nominee. So was the, the Democrat law party. of the land somewhat kind of just pushed to the side? There was no Democratic and, process. And then they were all in a pickup truck going down the road at night, and they pushed Biden out of the back of the pickup truck while they're running 100 miles an hour? Is that not what happened? Well, actually, what happened was the Democrat Party called Chad Grider and Casey Farr, my two oh, son-in-law, no, and terrible. they devised a plan on how to do it. Anyway, <laughs> that's terrible. What they did the same thing to Robert F. Kennedy that they did to Joe Biden. That's right. They're good During at that. During the primaries, mm -hmm. they just forced Robert F. Kennedy out of the way. They wouldn't allow him that to was primary not Democratic. Joe Biden. And I will say, I do believe this. Had Robert F. Kennedy Jr. got on a debate stage with Joe Biden, there would not have been a debate between mm -hmm. Joe Biden and Donald Trump. There no, would have been a uh, debate between Robert F. Kennedy exactly and right. Donald Trump. That's right. The Democratic process was denied to Robert F. Kennedy. Yeah. And the Democratic mm -hmm. process was thrown in the trash can mm -hmm. to arrive at a Kamala Harris who is yet to receive a single solitary vote at any time for a national position other than her Senate race. Mm -hmm. So she became vice president by appointment of Joe Biden, mm -hmm. and now she's become the nominee to run for president by appointment mm -hmm. of the Democrat Party. Mm -hmm. A few in the Democrat Party. A few in the Democrat Party. And it's yeah. obvious the that elites. the Democrat Party evidently is just a bunch of yes people. Yeah. Apparently. I mean, can you can you not think as an individual? Yeah, well, apparently they are running based off of what they really believe, that the elites know better yeah, that's what than the public. So yeah, therefore, so we're right. going to tell you what is great, wonderful, and joyful. And so that basically the convention is just a bunch of yes people? That's all it is. Okay. And they've been marketed. Well, they were all smiling there last well, night. Well, uh, the marketing campaign behind the Democrat National Convention is that we are happy, we are joyful. And I've we never have, seen so much joy. And now in we have life. hope, according to Michelle Obama. Hope. Yeah, we have hope. Well, if if that's if she's making this declaration that we now have hope, is not is that not casting a lot of shade on the last four years? Well, yeah. I, I mean, mean uh, you would like, think. Like, now but, we have but, hope. I but mean, watch like, this. I mean, the, the whole convention has been about that. Mm -hmm. They're saying that Kamala Harris is going to solve all of our problems. Well, she's been in office for three and a half <laughs> years. That's the reason we have the problems. Mm-hmm. Is because of the administration of Biden and Harris. They say she's going to tackle inflation. She's going to tackle all of these. They created it. Well, I even heard a statement there yesterday, Jeff, where it was brought up again that they inherited Trump. 
problems that he left. Yeah. I do have something to say about that. Yeah, go ahead. Wah. <laughs> Watch this. Listen to this. They've mentioned Donald Trump's name 297 times. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> They've mentioned the crime in America twice. They're in Chicago, Illinois. Mm-hmm. Last weekend, 117 people got shot. Just in Chicago. In Chicago. I can't remember how many where, died. Is that it was not where Obama died. did all of his good works? Well, that's where he's from. Well, he was a community yeah. organizer there yeah. in Chicago, so he's done an outstanding job. Uh, outstanding, yeah. As a matter of fact, this was brought up this morning. Uh, more violence in Chicago, Illinois, last weekend than what you had in Afghanistan. Oh, my goodness. And so they mentioned Donald Trump's name 297 times, crime twice that's that proof. tells you what's going on yeah somebody's not in reality yeah that's no all. and the whole time everybody's cheering and applauding and clapping and doing you know oh how joyful and and suddenly you know that's, that's, i just that's gotta pitiful. say it's it, it is it's insane mm-hmm. how people can be led astray and how you can spin something to that and degree. say that this all that we're dealing with is Donald Trump because of Donald Trump's presidency and it's and over. See, you know, my I, biggest concern, Jeff, is when I watch that is is the mental condition of all those people. I mean, that concerns me to be able to to do that with a straight face. Let me read this next paragraph. Oh, yeah. RFK Jr.'s departure from the presidential race marks a significant shift in the 2024 election dynamics. Uh, which he hasn't done yet, but we're anticipating mm-hmm. that. Once a darling of the left for his environmental activism, Kennedy has increasingly alienated the Democratic base with his, I would say the Democratic base is, a, a, no, it's, yeah, other it's way the other way around. Yeah. With his strong opposition to COVID-19 vaccines and other establishment positions, his growing popularity among Republicans and independents has led to speculation that his political future might align more closely with Trump's vision for America. I would like to say, don't, I wouldn't even blame him. I, I would read it, his political future might align more with truth. It ain't got the, nothing to do with, with Trump. With the vision of America. Yeah, it ain't got nothing to do ain't with Trump. It ain't got a thing to do with Trump. I don't think that Robert F. Kennedy, based off of his history, just look look mm-hmm. at his history all, going all the way back to when he was, you know, he, he would go on uh, talk shows back in the late 80s and 90s. Mm-hmm. And they would interview him about things he was working on as an attorney mm-hmm. based off of the environment. Right. And that I'll be honest with you, it spooked me about Robert F. Kennedy mm-hmm. because you don't know how far he's going to take this climate change thing. I just did a whole teaching this past Sunday. Well, not a whole teaching, but a majority of what I talked about this past Sunday mm-hmm. was climate change. Mm-hmm. Because the Bible very explicitly tells us what to expect concerning right. climate change. That's right. That's right. And how the earth responds to man's sinful rebellion, mm-hmm. and the earth responds to a movement of God. Mm-hmm. The earth, the land, responds to repentance. Mm-hmm. So I have a view about climate change that is more b- mm-hmm. biblically based. I don't deny climate change. I think the climate's always changing. <laughs> and, uh, I'm a farmer and know, I'll second that. Yeah, I mean, you know, but I, th- I do think the Word of God has some things to say about that. Robert F. Kennedy believes in climate change. But if you look at his work as a lawyer, as an attorney, concerning the environment, it was about cleaning up dirty water, which, which I'm, I'm, for. I'm for that. It's about cleaning up unnecessary pollution. Mm-hmm. I'm for all that. So, I'm saying that is it risky on that part, maybe, to consider the fact that Robert F. Kennedy is aligning himself with Trump's vision? I would say no. I think Robert F. Kennedy has a vision of himself based on what he studied and his research, mm-hmm. if, in fact, he can be set free to challenge the status quo based on that. I think he'll do it. He is well-versed. He has lived on the edge. His uncle lost his life over the swamp. Yeah. John Kennedy, which we now know, it appears, all of that was orchestrated by different facets in our own government. Yeah. yeah. And so he has stood, and plus is not to name his father. Right. So he has stood on the edge of the swamp. He knows what the swamp is. He knows where the alligators are in the swamp. Absolutely does. And so, therefore, I think his main objective personally I think he would maybe have something to say about the environment. But I think he'd be – I mean, he does like to hunt bear, you know. 
Yeah. So uh, I think he'd be more after hunting than he yeah. would expect. And, and I want to just put something else in there. The reason we brought up the food thing is because the last podcast he did was all about food. That's right. If you put him in even something like that, he's going to at least have the president's ear concerning the corporate structure and mm-hmm. its marriage to the government mm-hmm. and the corruption there. Also, I just want to say this to people that would think that we're compromising. Mm-hmm. The Democrat Party of the 1960s is the Republican Party of That's today. Right. That's the truth. That now, is I'm the just truth. as sorry as I can be. I that is the truth. Mm-hmm. The conservatives of the 60s don't exist anymore. No. They're not there. No, they're just, the only thing you can see is on old, old video. That's the That's close. exactly That's right. Just, yeah. The progression is the Republican Party is basically the 1960s Democrat That's Party. Right. Robert F. Kennedy has made the statement, he's still a 1960s Democrat. Mm-hmm. He said, if you check my record mm-hmm. and check my uncle's record, it's, same, it's in lockstep. Same, same, same. Now, I'm putting that out there to say that by the choices we have, that's as conservative as we have as in, a pub, in a political party. Okay. Let me throw this in, Jeff. It's, it's, it's the obvious, but I'd like to bring it up. And the obvious is, okay, if you got Elon Musk in the conversation now, you got Robert Kennedy Jr. in the conversation now. These are two men that at one time were in total opposition of Trump. Elon Musk voted, I think, for Obama. Oh, he did. Yeah. And he says that. He did. And so yeah. now you've got an Elon Musk saying, yes, I would like to work with Trump. Then you got Kennedy. Now, there's one thing you have to admit. You might not like Trump, but the old boy can make a deal. He can close the deal better, better than, than anybody, anybody you've ever seen. And so that's that's the point you and I have always had. Look at the deals this man closes. Don't go by his – let me say this, Jeff. When I go speak at places, and I do a lot of it – I do – not a lot. I do some speaking and stuff. But I always – my introduction, my self-introduction is I'm, a, I'm just a farmer. And, and that's true. I am, I am just a farmer. But I've learned if you say you're just a farmer, if you give people something to shoot at – you can give them something to shoot at, and then you go over here and do what you need to do. Yeah. And I think Trump might be guilty of a little of that. I think he's, he has this rhetoric of he's this and he's that, and, da, 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 and everybody gets upset. He's, that's a distraction. You just need to be paying attention to what he's doing. Yeah, that's exactly right. Because he, he's actually doing something. That's exactly right. And in all honesty, he has found this character he can portray, put it out there for people to shoot at, throw darts at, whatever you want to. And then he's got an agenda over here because here's a man who has now brought in two of the smartest men in the world, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, he's now closing a deal on these two guys, and they're going to be part of his team. Now, you can't tell me that a crawfish can do that. If he pulls this off, mm-hmm. and if he pursues this, and if RFK and Elon Musk starts no, I mean, come uh, on, building a coalition mm-hmm. around what Trump is doing. If he brings his team, if he does together, that, if he does that, if he brings, he's and pulled this, it off, and that team keeps growing with such personalities as yeah. these, yeah. and chances are it will. Yeah. If he pulls this off and then loses the election, there's a worm in the apple somewhere. You better know that. Thing I can tell you right now. You better know because, that number because I mean he's putting together a team that I think Biden would even vote for. Well, and let me just I want to ask you this based off of what you just said. All the polls are tightening up. And with the hoopla around the convention, I mean, you can't really go based off. I was having a conversation with some friends of mine last night. They was asking me some questions right. about this. Is that the one that caused deer? <laughs> it wasn't the guy that calls the deer. Okay, go no, ahead. Okay. Gonna... We'll show that to uh, yeah, we need to. Anyway, they was asking me what what do you th- who do you think's gonna win? Who do you mm-hmm. think's gonna win? I'm just gonna say what I All right, go what it. I believe. I don't believe the polls. At all. I just don't have any Not confidence. Not even in the polls. close. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say if everything stays like it is right now and if God would just give protection around Donald Trump to live to get to the election. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, it's proven he's already done it once. Yes, that's yeah, right. That's, that's right. right. Mm-hmm. I think Donald Trump will be our next president. Mm-hmm. I think I believe that. Mm-hmm. I believe he's going to be our next Let president. Me, correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff. You remember these numbers better than I. Didn't Hillary lead 
Trump by 30 points at one time. At one, yeah, at one time she was up by 30. And at this same time, I think this same time in the race, I think she was up by 12 or 15 oh, or okay. something. Oh, okay, okay. But I'm saying that, um, you know, right now it's showing Kamala Harris and Donald Trump kind of at a dead heat. Mm-hmm. Or they'll put uh, her ahead. Or they'll put her ahead by a little. By a little. And a few states they'll put Donald Trump ahead just a little. But, you know, if you believe most of the polls, Kamala Harris would – would based on the polls would win the election if it was held today. Well, Kamala, was, I don't believe that she had like a twenty two percent approval rating before she yeah, entered right. her race. Well, the lowest approval rating of any vice president in the history of our country. Yeah. But I she think was she was Senate. being she was being nominated. I think for a cartoon special. <laughs> I'm not sure. It's just hearsay. Just hearsay. <laughs> but but anyway, go ahead. As a senator, when she was in the Senate, mm-hmm. her voting record put her as more progressive and more liberal than Bernie Sanders. Oh, then she found somebody that's worse than her. Uh, yeah, there is nobody worse than her. He, he doesn't have walking around since Jeff. No, I know, I, and always a self-proclaimed socialist. Yeah, and she was to the left of of him. Now here's the problem: the wow. dude she picked to run as her vice president is to the left of her. <laughs> so you have this. Well, if I believed in flat Earth, he just fell off. Listen, I would vote for a flat earth to push him off. <laughs> oh I'm just saying. He's going to walk off. You ain't going to uh, have to worry about it. It is pathetic mm-hmm. what the Democrat Party has put up to run. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and I say the Democrat Party put this up. The elites in the Democrat Party mm-hmm. put this up. The people didn't vote for these guys. No, huh? So well, let, let me ask you a question here. Okay. We've talked about these giants in the land, so to speak, or yeah. whatever. Let's be a Joshua and a, and a Caleb. What do you think is the will of God? All right, we're giving a report on the giants here. Let's be a Joshua and Caleb. What do you think we can do about these giants? Is there hope or what? Yeah, there's what, hope. What, what's God saying for us to do? Here's what I think the Lord's saying. I think the Lord is telling the Christian people of America to intercede and pray. Mm-hmm on behalf of who is the best leader for our country out of the choices we have. Mm -hmm. And who the best leader for our country out of the choices we have is most definitely, without doubt, Mm -hmm. Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. So to say that it's the will of God for Donald Trump to be the president of the United States again, it is unequivocally, without any compromise or doubt, it is the will of God for Donald Trump to be mm-hmm. the president, next mm-hmm. president of the United States. And that's a Joshua and Caleb report. And so, we can do it. And we can do this. We can take the land. Yeah. And, and we believe here, Smith and Rowland show, that that is the will of God. That's the will of God. In Christ Jesus mm-hmm. concerning us. You're right. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, right, let me ask you this. Can a Christian with a clear conscience vote for Kamala and the Waltz guy? We've talked about this in the mm-hmm. past, and I'm going to I'm going to re say I, I haven't moved from what I. Well, I, I'm, I'm kind of baiting you for your comment. Yeah, I, I haven't moved. There is no way that you can reconcile your faith to a vote for mm-hmm. Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz. Right. There's no way you can reconcile your biblical understanding to a vote. For Kamala Harris. Now we have months. Democrat Christians listening to us. Right yeah, now. I, I, yeah, and and I. So do you want to rephrase that? No, uh, not at all. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, you can to. back up and no, punt. No, if anything, I said we get. We'll give you two seconds okay, to reconsider. Me, I'll reconsider. Two seconds. Okay. One thousand. Two thousand. No. Okay, I'll just check. And and furthermore, <laughs> furthermore, you know, I'm not trying to be offensive. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm stating what I really believe. Because we're we're doing a Joshua Caleb report here. That came to me this morning that perhaps on our shows sometimes we can just stop and have a, a yeah. Joshua and Caleb report here. Yeah, okay. We know we got I, these I giants in the land. We yeah. got yeah, all these reports, and those two guys said, "Yeah, they're there." But God said, "Yeah, here's what God here, said." Here's what God and, said. And let me remind people that they rejected. The Joshua and Caleb mm-hmm. report. That's right. Let me let me also say that it cost them when they uh, yes. rejected yeah, look the Joshua what it cost and Caleb them. report. They didn't get to enter in. They didn't get to enter in. And so I'm saying that the will of God can be rejected. I'm not announcing that Donald Trump's going to be the next president. That's but what right. I am saying, uh, it's the, the will, will of God, God. for and Donald we, Trump to be And we're going president. to start making proclamations if you will, of what we believe is the will of God. Yeah, and we're going to put faith behind that. Put faith behind that. Now, we're not predicting future. Not predicting it, no. Because to us, true prophetic voice speaks forth the will of God. That's right. Just like a Joshua and a Caleb. That's right. It speaks forth the will of God. We know, though, 
that the will of God doesn't always happen. That's right. And it's because people reject it. They reject the will of God. Therefore, we apparently have a choice. Of do you reckon? But, Jeff, Christians are scared to take a position. Well, just follow your heart. Christians and and leaders are scared to take a position. On the will of God. Now, if you don't know the will of God, that's okay. You don't have to say it. But when it's obvious what the will of you've, you've got two choices here yeah you don't have three four five six that's well right. you, you got basically two choices yeah and not to vote for one of them is a vote for the other one that's right so, yeah that's exactly so, right. so you got yeah. two choices yeah and out of these two choices if god places everybody in position and leadership on the planet i have to assume that god somewhere has his person or man that could be one of the choices. Without a doubt. Anytime you're in a situation that you have a choice, I believe that the Lord's will is to pick who best fits the will of God yeah. for Cons- the country. Consider this, out When Joshua and Caleb came back, what if one of the other ten said, well, I'm just not voting? <laughs> Still, it wouldn't have changed. <laughs> That's right. To say, oh, okay, well, I'm this fed up. I ain't going to do nothing. Okay, mm-hmm. well, I don't want to talk to you. Well, same way with – we think it's will of God <clears> – <throat> for Trump to be president, and we're saying it, and we're saying it out loud. But yet, we could also say, I could say, Jeff, listen, it's podcast suicide for us to out loud say that we think the will of God is Donald Trump. I say, Jeff, that's podcast suicide. Mm -hmm. We could die there. So we have to make a choice. Are we willing to die here? Oh, without a doubt. Or are we afraid of these giants out there? Yeah, somewhere or another, you got to make a decision. Yeah, you got to make a choice. Yeah, you got to make a choice. We we were talking about that a little bit last night at church. Following Christ may mean death. Mm-hmm. Not always will Jesus come by and resurrect the dead. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of people died while Jesus was on the earth, mm-hmm. and he didn't resurrect them. Mm-hmm. He did a few, but he didn't resurrect them. That's right. That's right. So life circumstances are life circumstances. That's are right. you going to still follow Christ, mm-hmm. even though you know? Yeah, even but though. the reason that I even do a podcast is to tell, try to tell the truth as I know it. Yeah. And so and if I was, that causes our death, guess what? It is we so just bad. die. That's just right. Well, we've died a hundred times already. Yeah. Where our podcasts are going to now, and especially our, even our unplugged, our daily podcast, but we're probably going to be in the studio most of the time now daily doing our podcast. And so it gives Jeff and I, it's much easier for Jeff and I to be in the studio yes, because we can be more deliberate in our conversation. If I'm in another barn office, he's in a truck and you're constantly fighting, well, if I got a signal, if I not got a signal, yeah. you know, anyway, you'll notice that our podcasts are changing format a little bit here. We're trying to bring it into a more of a daily, but what Jeff and I want to do in trying to have more of a daily podcast is we're always wanting to shoot for a Joshua and a Caleb report. De- report yeah. is what we're doing. A That's Joshua right. and Caleb report. Yeah. And we're going to be saying we think this is the will of God. Absolutely. And there you go. That's my story. That's the Smith and Rowling story. Shut. Winder is shut on it. Join us at the Kingdom Prophetic Society.org. You can also join our YouTube channel. You can get our podcast on Podbean, Spotify, My Face, Spaceface, face, Foot, and foot, feed. foot, left, foot, left, <laughs> foot, forward. Right. Okay, okay. Thank you for joining today's Smith & Rowan Show. You can check out our website at kingdompropheticsociety.org and our daily unplugged podcast at smithandrowanshow.podbean.com. You can also join us on Amazon, Apple, or Spotify.